a bit about 3M is uh, Chris Cope, uh, the Head of Digital Services Department at the North Vancouver City Library, as well as overseeing management of online experiences from the library's websites to a variety of streaming services. Chris also oversees the library's innovative Tech Connect technology training service and is in the process of implementing their digital media creation stations, which the next uh, includes the installation of their in-house audio and video production facilities. So, come on up, Chris. Hi. Thanks, Dr. Worley. Oh, you can hold that. I mean, film. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm old, so I'm going to use a big iPad, and uh, I have nothing on screen for you. Um, so I'm here to talk about uh, 3M. And the first thing that I'll say is that a lot of you may know that uh, earlier last year, 3M uh, sold its library technologies division to a company called Biblioteca. So these days, when people talk about the cloud library, people are still rightly referring to it as the 3M cloud library or a, a just cloud library. It will be rebranded quite shortly, and the, the big uh, red letters 3M will be replaced with uh, CL for cloud library. That's going to be their new branding. So I'm here to talk about 3M, and first of all, a little bit about our, our library. North Vancouver City is a little tiny uh, principality on the North Shore. Um, we're we're sort of a, a, a bit of a poor cousin to the other library systems that uh, we live with. Um, we decided to bring 3M on a couple of years ago because, number one, we were very attracted to a user experience that got rid of a logistic that was frustrating both our staff and our users. So uh, when 3M, 3M came along and they had evolved their user experience to the point where a very seamless transaction could take place, we thought, yes, this is time. Also, we were not wanting to support Overdrive's Advantage program to the degree that we thought that we couldn't do this, we couldn't bring on another vendor. So Advantage money at the time was uh, redeployed to support our 3M service. So since that time, 3M now accounts for 50% of our ebook transactions um, at the city, in spite of the fact that we have 10% of the ebook, uh, sorry, 5% of the ebook uh, uh, titles um, that is available on the overdrive side. That tells us that our users are interested in a um, uh, popular reading, bestsellers, the latest uh, um, of their most uh, uh, sought after authors. So for us, 3M is uh, paying dividends um, as a local access, uh, priority access, extra copy uh, uh, platform for our particular users. We have a very liberal um, holds ratio. It's um, um, no more than four holds per copy before another copy is purchased. Um, and I think that uh, before getting on to the things that we like about 3M, I'll talk about the two things that bother me about, sorry, cloud library. Um, the first thing is, is that, uh, and mostly it's librarians only who are concerned about this, uh, the, um, the advanced search function for the user, if you want to do some advanced searching, it's very poorly uh, rendered and conveyed uh, for the user. So, if you, so in um, the OverDrive library to go experience, you have a number of different facets that you can access to help limit, refine, and add precision to your searching. In 3M, that's not currently available. However, I will say that with the acquisition of the cloud library by Biblioteca, that advanced search function is coming quite soon. I also have no stock in 3M or Biblioteca or the cloud library. I think the only stock I have is a celery stock, which is about three weeks old and quite wilted in my fridge. Anyhow, uh, so yeah, that advanced search function is um, currently quite poor. Um, the, uh, the other con that I have about, um, uh, about 3M, I'll remind myself of with my big iPad. One moment. <coughs> Sorry for that clunk. Oh, here we are. Cons. Oh, yeah. So, um, the other uh, uh, con, can you hear me? You can hear me without that microphone. Great. The other con that I have about uh, 3M is um, as opposed to Overdrive's um, Overdrive Read Service, that's the in-browser reading apparatus that allows somebody with an internet connection to open up that book right away and start reading, 3M doesn't currently have that apparatus available. However, 
that's coming uh, shortly. I think Biblioteca is rightly placed to sort of um, further evolve the uh, cloud library experience. So they're pouring a lot of R&D into um, not just matching uh, OverDrive, but also surfacing some other experiences there. The pluses with the cloud library, oh sorry, I'll, I'll talk about content. All the major publishers are accessible. You won't find any um, big differences there. Um, I, I did a scan of the Globe and Mail's top 20 bestsellers, both in ebook and audiobook format, because Cloud Library offers both formats. Um, Overdrive was missing a Canadian title uh, as an ebook offering. Um, Phyllis Whitley's um, My Secret Mother, I believe. However, um, all the other bestsellers uh, are available in Overdrive, but all of them are available through the uh, 3M catalog. You'll find some slight differences in pricing. Uh, the Cloud Library um, charges slightly less, particularly for its HarperCollins um, titles and imprints, uh, than Overdrive does on the ebook side. However, um, Overdrive is cheaper on the audiobook side, and there's a good reason for that. Overdrive has been signing license agreements with its publishers for a lot longer than Cloud Library has, but you can bet that when uh, Overdrive's license agreements come up for renewal with their publishers on the audiobook side, you will see some, um, some equaling of that, uh, of that pricing difference. Um, on the, uh, the plus side as well, back to my old person iPad, um, yeah, support. I don't want my users having to spend a lot of time struggling to use this product. I'm not going to pay, I don't didn't like that I had to pay Overdrive an extra amount of money uh, to get some 24-hour support responses to some of their difficulties. I am pleased that the Cloud Library support team is able to refer and respond to a support request without an additional um, uh, fee on my part that I have to pay. So I quite like that. Uh, that's good business, I think. The integration uh, uh, with our ILS offers that seamless checkout, one-click checkout experience, as is available with um, Overdrive and its APIs that they've opened up through all the major ILS platforms, including Biblio Commons. Our users are able to go um, to our main catalog. All those records are integrated with our print titles, and they're able to, uh, to locate that uh, cloud library option, borrow right away, and it's available right away. You do not have to worry about, um, even if you have an e-ink reader, about Adobe Digital Editions and Adobe IDs. We stop having to have that discussion and that information sharing with our customers. We're one of five libraries in British Columbia, next to Burnaby, Coquitlam, uh, Greater Victoria, and the Fraser Valley Regional Library System, who have brought on Cloud Library. And I will say that the, the biggest thing and the best thing that I like about, about Cloud Library, which is why I'm a big fan of it is that for a long time the interlibrary loan experience across ebook vendors has been eluding us. However, Cloud Library has something called Cloud Link. If you are a cloud library, you can um, associate your cloud library collection with another library's collection, and your users will not know who owns what, but so long as the title is actually available, not out, you'll be able to actually borrow from that other library system um, uh, directly. So that is as good as interlibrary loan gets right now, and that for me is an invitation to any of the other four library systems or anybody else who wants to come on with Cloud Library, that if you are interested in Cloud Library uh, link, please come and talk to me. We're very anxious to set that up with you. Okay, right, great. So um, <laughs> uh, we have a response to that invitation. That's Cloud Library for me. Do y'all have any questions about that? Hi, Deb. <laughs> Is it still $1,000 per library per link? Um, I think that they have a lot of flexibility right now because currently there are no libraries set up for Cloud Library link at this time. <laughs> try and repeat that. So um, uh, that Overdrive is answering that by allowing its advantage collections to be, what would you say again? You can basically like put them back into the 
Right. Right. That actually allows me, yeah, you can put them back into the consortial collection. That actually allows me to raise one other issue that I have with OverDrive. With, with the cloud library, your license is a transferable license. In other words, um, that you own those titles. Those, li those titles are licensed to you. It's not licensed to you through 3M. OverDrive wants to charge us $2 per title to get our Advantage titles transferred over to the cloud library. No thank you. I like the cloud library model where we license those titles we actually have a little more ownership of those titles than we than we do with OverDrive. So, yeah. Yeah? Um, you said that if, if uh, another library has available, a person can pick it up. If it's not available, can a person from another library get a hold? No. Yeah. It works like this. It works like this. You have an app, the 3M, uh, sort of the cloud library app is installed on a desktop, a laptop, or a mobile device. For e-ink readers, you're concerned with using a desktop or a laptop, and all that happens is you plug that e-reader, except for the Kindle, you plug that e-reader into that laptop or, uh, or a desktop computer. The computer detects, uh, has that conversation, um, connects those two together. Cloud Library recognizes that, and on the book cover of those Cloud Library titles that you want transferred to that e-ink reader, you get a little transfer to the device instantly, you press it, it happens instantly. That's it. And it's just your library card number and pin. It's your library card number and your pin. Nope. You don't create an account. Your library card and pin. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. All right. belong to the consortium library to go collection um, and our collection responsibilities are basically divided into two kind of extremes one is um, the selection side of things so we're looking at the different genres looking at different audiences um, the bestseller list and also you know like the award winners and then the other side is responding to usage and also on demand so we are looking at um, the host ratio, so we have, we try to do as much as we can to meet a one to four host ratio for ebooks and a one to eight host ratio for audiobooks. Um, and then we look at expiring titles um, to see if there's still demand, so add, we add that into our collection. And the latest thing that we have is our patron acquisition feature um, that I will talk about in a little bit. Um, so right now we're doing about a 75% ebooks and 25% audiobooks, and that's based on usage statistics and that we review every year to see if we are still meeting that um, borrowing pattern. Um, and we're doing about 85% fiction, 15% non-fiction, 85% adult titles, 10% kids, and 5% teens at the moment. Um, so that again, all based on what people have been borrowing so far. Um, in terms of um, uh, new features, every year the co-op sent out a survey to all the member libraries to ask them um, about the budget for the next year and also kind of what kind of new features they're in favor of adding. So this year, um, in March, uh, near the end of March, we have turned on the patron acquisition, patron driven acquisition module, which they call um, request to library. Um, so basically what um, people see when they get to the website is when they do a browse, um, or different lists or when they are doing a search um, on the page on the side and also at the bottom, at the bottom of the page it will say, you know, like if you didn't find the title that you're looking for, you can actually search beyond what your library owns and look at what ebooks or what audiobooks that are available to purchase um, through OverDrive and you can recommend the library to do so. So, so far for um, the last two months since the feature has been turned on, we have had more than 2,000 requests 
um, from everybody. And uh, I would say it's about 75% ebooks and 25% audiobooks are very similar to the spending pattern that we have been doing. Um, out of the two thousand, more than the 2,000 requests, we were able to buy about 165 titles, which is about 7.5% of it. Um, and just to give you a sense, um, we our budget that we have for this year for the request to library is about $8,000. If the requests are coming in at this rate, and if we want to buy every single thing, it will take about $487,000 for us to do that. So there's like, there's three times the budget that we have for the whole selection. So that's probably not going to happen, but it is a great way for us to be a little more responsive um, to our patrons. Um, so that is, the feature, um, that is the request to library feature. And then the other thing that we've added to our website is our featured collections, which is also called curated list in Overdrive. Um, and so with that, um, on the homepage, you will see after all the new books, um, new audio books, you know, lost in the stacks kind of carousels that is standard come with the Overdrive site. At the bottom, you will see some of the feature collections, basically your book list. Um, so we have um, put together some of this so that we can market our collection better um, based on reader likes or topics or genres. And last week, the co-op has sent a message um, to ask for um, anybody who is interested in helping out with um, creating some of these book lists. Um, please come and give or give you need more information. Please come and talk to me or Laurie from the co-op, and we'll be happy to um, tell you more about it. Um, so that is pretty much our overdrive update. Does anybody have any questions? No. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Just one more thing before I forget. Um, we have a collection development guidelines that we have put together. So if anybody want more details about how your money is being spent, um, that is available through the co website. Okay, thank you. And now to uh, talk a bit about Kukla, I've got Nadine White, uh, the Public Services Librarian at the Whistler Public Library. She is responsible for the adult uh, collection programming and uh, manages the frontline customer service staff. She's been with the Whistler Public Library for 10 years and is passionate about rebranding the library as more than just books. So take it away. Thank you. All right. So I just wanted to give everyone a quick refresher about Hoopla. How many libraries in the room already have it? OK, so a few. All right, let's switch that out if we can. Um, so it is a collection of always available audiobooks, movies, TV shows, and music. And most recently, they've added comics and ebooks. So the price model is cost per circulation. And right now, the range is $0.69 cents to $5.99. You can set a maximum number of titles per calendar month per patron that they can borrow. Or, if you'd rather, you can set a monthly maximum budget that is then broken down into a daily cap. And once that cap is used, then it puts a full stop on borrowing. The other way that you can manage your budget is that you can set a maximum price per title threshold. So it'll eliminate any of the titles that are above your threshold from your local collection. You can also exclude formats. And you can go as far as excluding individual titles. So I know that Jennifer last year talked about Hoopla and she mentioned Boyhood. So it had just won the Oscar. So what they would do is they would go into their collection and pull out titles that would cause an undue burden on their budget and instead gear people towards the physical copies of the DVDs. So once you have your patrons sign into the website or the app, it doesn't show them any of these titles that you've excluded. So it only shows what you can have locally. And there are no setup fees or maintenance costs. So you just have to put down a deposit when you get started. And I believe it's about $2,000 when we did it. And once your deposit is gone, you can put down another lump sum payment or you can turn it into a pay as you go scenario. So as of February 2016, the collection included 390,000 titles. Out of that number, most of them are music albums, and they're pretty good because they have Universal and Warner's. Then the audiobooks, there's about 20,000. They're really good too, there's some big publishers. For the movies and television series, it's a bit limited. We describe it as early day Netflix to our patrons. Um, then the new formats, the comics look really great. We didn't turn them on when they got introduced, 
but they do have some big players. They have DC and Dark Horse, Vertigo, and Archie. Um, and then for the ebooks, there's about 60,000, but they're from smaller and independent publishers. So they might be a good complement for other book or ebook collections. In terms, in terms of usability, our patrons find it to be the most the simple and easy to use product that we have. Um, when you're using the website, you're streaming everything. When you're in the app, you have the option to download and then go offline. With the audiobooks, comics, and ebooks, you get them for 21 days. Music albums, you get for seven days. Movies and TV shows, and it does circulate per episode, it's only 72 hours. You get free mark records from Hoopla, so you can make it all of the titles discoverable in your uh, local catalog. And we found that the sales and support staff are very helpful and actually very attentive. Um, the admin site is super easy to use, you can run reports, you can change all your settings. So that's generally how it's going to work for everybody. For a small library like us, um, you might wonder why we chose Hoopla and how we did it. Um, the reason why is that it offered formats that we weren't offering before. So we didn't have any streaming films or downloadable films or the music. And it had a wow factory. So it, a factor, not factory. Um, so it, it hit a couple of our strategic priorities. One was to use technology to expand our service capabilities, and the other was to grow the number of people who use and value the library. So being that this was an online resource, it was going to be accessible 24-7, but also I think non-users were going to be appeal, find it appealing, and we could create a really great marketing campaign behind it. However, we knew going into it that the pricing model was going to be very challenging and could turn out to be very expensive. So how we made it happen is that in 2014, we underwent a number of changes. We implemented a new service model, and um, we just weren't able to spend all of our collection budget that year. So we had a surplus. So we were able to put down the deposit that we were hoping would carry us all the way through 2015. And so we could experiment. Um, we were trying to move our collection in a new direction, being a bit more aggressive about our spending, um, potentially cancelling things that didn't have a lot of use so we could free up money for really what we would call premium value added services. So at the same time, we actually launched Linda.com and Press Reader. Um, so that uh, deposit that we put down, well, it was gone by the end of the year, as you can imagine. <laughs> And so this year, we really have to make some hard decisions because it is getting used, um, but it costs quite a bit. So sitting down to look at the, the stats, um, we discovered that if we compare it to Overdrive, they don't have exactly the similar formats, but um, it costs twice as much for us to have Hoopla as it does Overdrive, and it's getting one third of the use. So with that in mind, we have to look at, is it providing value to our community? What we could go in and do is we could change a lot of our settings. We currently have a price threshold of $3.99, and we have five euros per month. So we could bring both of those down if we wanted, or we could look at implementing that monthly cap. However, I get a little nervous about that because then you would have turnaways all of the time. And are you upholding your values? We're barrier free. That's a huge barrier. And if we're getting these products for that wow factor, it sort of diminishes your confidence in the library. But there are some really neat things that we also found out from this year of experimentation. Um, we found that patrons are interested in items at the pr higher price level, so bringing that down would disappoint them. Um, we also did reduce our maximum number of euros per month. That didn't help with the budget. Uh, we were really surprised because I thought music was the strongest quality in this um, collection and it, it didn't give very much use. Um, in comparison to films and audiobooks, it's about half the use. And then why are people using so many films? So I think it speaks to the fact that they want that format and they'll even watch bad movies. <laughs> um, and then with the audiobooks, um, it's already been said today, but they're very popular. 
And so we had the same amount of use for audiobooks as films. And we have a lot of choices. We have one for digital and we have overdrive. So I think the always available feature is something that people are looking for. So going forward, we're going to gleam all of the information we can to really see what our community wants. And are we going to tinker with Hoopla or are we going to try to look at alternatives? Um, and so if anyone has any questions or if you have any experiences to share. When we launched? Yeah, so when we launched, um, we had those three products, Hoopla, Linda.com, and I guess it was Library Press Display at that time, not Press Reader. And we actually created a campaign that says something big is happening, and it was just those words, and we plastered it everywhere. And when people would ask us what was going on, we'd say, oh, I'm only telling you. And then we would explain <laughs> the first time. <laughs> yeah. um, and then the day of the launch, um, we have great um, little takeaways on every service desk. We use our social media. And the fact that all of the records are in the, catalog, ca the catalog and are discoverable, that really helps. Um, but for the staff, I think they'd rather talk to someone about Hoopla than any other product. So it gets promoted a lot one-on-one -on -one with people. All right, thank, thank you. you. Our next speaker might need it, so I'd like to.